of sugar cubes and it is wednesday i keep fucking up and not doing terrible tuesday uh updates and just keeping them for wednesdays i don't know why i don't know why i get i wake up early and i'm just like i'm gonna record and then i'm just like i'm procrastinating so what is this vlog about so here's an introduction to uh who is Nano Valtiel? And pretty much, who am I? Valtiel, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> sorry, I've been listening to a lot of PD Pablo lately. Anyway, so, who am I? What do I do? And why do I do it? Well, first and foremost, I am a cosplayer. I am a fashion and costume designer on the side of that. Um, I've done it professionally since I was about 16, fashion designing and costuming designing wise. Um, I've been a professional cosplayer since I was 18. I started out with cosplay deviants, and yes, it's nude modeling, but I'm very comfortable with my body, and I find, you know, that even naked, you can produce art. I mean, you know, paint me like one of your French girls and all that shit. So, I'm weird. I am first and foremost a motherfucking hothead. Like, the per wrong person will say the wrong thing to me, and it's just like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Like, if I was a superhero, I'd be fuck you. I'd be fuck you, girl. It's like, I'm gonna take this TV. Hey, stop. Why? Fuck you. Get it right to the motherfucking point. Um, now, there have been a lot of misconceptions about me lately that I'm kind of not happy about um i got posted on sexy cosplay girls like page or whatever and some of the comments are like people that happen to like my page when a couple of people were just like going through albums and just liking every picture go to the next album liking every picture go to the next album liking every picture and if you've had that happen to you it can get really annoying and it pretty much just you know, spans up the notifications on my like page. I don't care if you do it on my ad page, but it's kind of obnoxious. And I personally say if you're going to like every photo in an album, please make it easier on me to get to everyone's messages and stuff and just like the album. And apparently that made me a diva and rude to my fans and all of that. I... For the fans that have followed me since 2009, and for the fans that have gotten to know me on a person on a very very personal level, I mean, I'm a I'm you know technically a godmother to one of my fans' kids. Um, I you know offer you know a helping hand when fans need it. I you know set aside time to have Skype calls with some of you guys when you've had a bad day. And, you know, I think I do a little bit more than what other people do. And I don't put on a fake personality where it's like shitting rainbows and farting Skittles and all that shit. I don't do that. I'm, I believe that what you see is what you get. And I'm not going to be like, look at this, you know, costume progress. And yeah, I post costume progress, but... I'm more of a, I'm going to make a fart joke in my status update today. Fuck it. And, you know, when everyone wrote on the original post, like, really touched me, I, you know, ended up getting teary-eyed. You can even ask Murder Nurse because she was on Skype with me when all this was going down. And I was intoxicated. You know, I went to, you know, my local bar for Terrible Tuesday that she laylies in Astoria. And, you know... I always encourage, you know, people who live in New York to come down, you know, have a drink with me. Some of you guys have done that. Um, some of you even showed up for my birthday, which I thought was really, really spiffy. And I was supposed to, you know, perform yesterday, but that ends up not happening. And, you know, I just feel like everyone that did stand up for me just, like, just really, really touched my heart because I've, Never really had people sign up for me that weren't, you know, my mother, that weren't, you know, like someone blood related to me. 
And I think that like that 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 that's like amazing that you guys did that for me. So thank you very much for your love and support. And yes, the white knighting. I think it's the only time where I gave anyone permission to white knight me. You know, <laughs> and it's crazy. You know, and I. I'm just, like, really, really touched by it, and, like, you know, wherever I go in life, I'm bringing the sugar cubes with me, like, you guys are my sugar cube army, and, sorry, I'm kind of choked up here, and, you know, I'm taking you guys every step of the way, you know, um, I, you know, take your suggestions as to what I should do design-wise, um, some of you have given me advice on school, on life, on, just so many different things, and I'm fucking shaking because I'm just like, oh my god, um, you guys have just been there for me, alright, so, enough of that, <laughs> so, what do I do, who am I, how did I get into this, um, and I'll, I started, uh, going to conventions, so I was about 14, my first convention was, uh, Big Apple Comic Con, when they used to have it, like, in a base, in a church basement, and I... You know, I started watching anime and getting into geek culture when I was a very, very young age. Um, I was, like, about two or three when I saw my first Godzilla movie. Project Echo was my first anime. Then it went to Sailor Moon and Giver and the original Ghost in the Shell series, Gundam, Robotech. Um, it was a lot of mecha anime at that time that I watched, uh, Macross and all that. And um, from anime and Japanese monster movies, it went to comic books, my brothers of Marvel, I was more into Batman because of Batman the Animated Series, and then, like, when I was younger, I was in Superman because of Superman Animated Series, so pretty much all of my knowledge from Batman and Superman uh, universes is mostly from the cartoons, and then I started reading the comic books, and while I wish I could keep up with the thousands upon thousands of comic books that come out relating Batman and Superman, I don't have the space for all of that. <laughs> um, then I got into the New York Anime Festival. When it was New York Anime Festival's Made Cafe in 2008, um, I was and that was when the con was back in December because they would have a uh, New York Comic Con in February and then. Um, New York Anime Festival in September or December, one of the two. And that was a fun experience. I got to meet so many people. Then after that, I started going to KatsuCon, um, Anime Next, um, Anime Boston, um, Otakon. And then from there, um, TV, one of the maids, um, applied for Cosplay Deviants. And I was like, well, I'm turning 18. I really like this. This is... You know, something I totally get into, you know, being paid, you know, to create art and, you know, to still do cosplay. So I got in, and I totally joined as a joke on a whim. I didn't think I was going to get in, and I got in, and I worked with them up until last year. And, you know, they pretty much opened the door for me as traveling-wise, costuming-wise, and all of that. So, you know, I'm really thankful for them. Now I'm with Geek Goddess, which is a little tamer, and more on the pin up -y side. And I really enjoy it, and, you know, we're going to my first, uh, we're, we're going to one of, one of the first um, cons of the year, which is MTAC in Tennessee, and it's my first time going to Nashville, so I'm fucking excited, because I love Southern accents, and I'm just like, yay! Um, and I have to address the nude modeling thing a little bit. Um pretty much why I like doing nude modeling and fetish modeling and all of that is because it's another, it's another way of form of showing who I am, not sexually, but like artistically, you know, if I can do a crazy pose while in skin tight latex, that's amazing to me. If I can be tight laced to 18 inch waist and still pull out bitch and move, uh, like bitch and poses and shit while being in excruciating pain, to me, that's art. To me, that's, you know, jumping over a hurdle. And I'm very comfortable with my body. I'm very comfortable with, you know, people looking at my body and admiring it. Granted, I don't really care for the creepy comments and I don't need to know if you fapped in my folders. Keep that to yourself, please. And, I pretty much just 
do it for myself because it's a, it's also a confidence building thing for me. So while people look down on it, I think it raises, you know, what I do to like a whole nother level because it's not just cosplay for me. It's about bringing diff like different things that people like and being able to make it really artistic and make it beautiful and gorgeous and you know working with cassandra i've been able to do that and without her i would not be where i am today so you know i'm extremely grateful to cassandra and her amazing talents and just everything that she's done for me and you know her and her fiance um have been like the best of friends to me for like the past three years i mean they've got me through so much shit it's like, I don't even know how they put up with me sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm a burlesque dancer with cosplay burlesque. That's the only troupe I'm working with right now. And there's a misconception that I'm a stripper. Um, someone brought that up the other day. I am not a stripper. Um, I do do the aspect of burlesque where there is stripping involved. But I believe there's a huge difference where, you know, you're choreographing a dance and you have to be able to keep your di timing down packed not just in practice but on stage as well and you know i've done two shows so far the third one is going to be at katsukon on friday night at 10 p.m make sure you check that out and it's it's been a working experience for me you know people are like well why don't you take this class in new york it's the burlesque school or whatever and i'm just like if i could afford a class i'd take a class but it's not it's more of something i do for fun it's not something that i can see myself being goo goo gaga over and like make all the money over and shit you know um a lot of people ask me you know what are your favorite animes what are your favorite video games now those lists are really really long especially when you've been watching anime and playing video games as long as i have but when it comes to it, it's always Cowboy Bebop, Gungrave, um, Gundam, Gundam Wing. Uh, I like Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, even though my friends strongly disagree that I should be liking any of those two series. I liked it. Fuck your shit. Um, I loved Chobit. I loved Bleach at one point. I really loved Naruto at one point. Then my favorite characters died, and I was just like, fuck this shit. And then all of a sudden, they come back to life, and I'm just like, well, shit. Well, shit. Um, I like Ghost in the Shell, Ergo Proxy, Dead Man Wonderland, uh, Guyver, the original series. Um, um, the anime and manga, of course. I really wish they would finish, you know, like, the actual... Um, manga stories in the anime form is just so fucking badass. And it's just like, oh my god, all the feels. Um, you know, and video games right now, I'm playing some game that my friend put on my PSP Go that he gave me for my birthday. It's like some RPG by the same people that made Corpse Party. I love Corpse, I love me some motherfucking Corpse Party, let me tell you. Um, RPG Maker Games, Witch's House, Mad Father. Um, Desert Nightmare, I think I said The Witch's House, not sure, um, you know, I love Final Fantasy series, not, um, uh, my first Final Fantasy ever was Final Fantasy 7, you know, and that was, like, the greatest thing to me next to Butter Rolls, which I have one next to me right here, um, next to me, you know, best fucking shit since Butter Rolls and, you know, Mom's Breast Milk, pretty much, and I... You know, then, you know, the movie came out for Advent Children, and that was, like, really enjoyable. I wanted to cosplay Yasuo at one point, because I was just like, he says, like, two things in the whole fucking movie, he's fucking badass. I want those guns in my hands right now. Speaking of guns, I love Black Lagoon. I fucking love Revy so much that I'm getting her motherfucking tack, her fucking half sleeve and shit, gonna go up to my neck and shit. Why? Because if... America ever became martial law, and it was every motherfucker for himself. I legit be ready. I want two 9 millimeter uh, Beretta sword cutlass with the extended barrel with the fucking Russian insignia. I don't even know what it says, but why anyway? And, um, yeah, I got excited about that. Um, so, like, yeah, y'all see I wanted to cosplay him and all that shit, and then, like, 
I didn't know how to work with leather at the time. I hate making long coats and everything on eBay looked like fucking trash bags sewn together. And I'm just like, I quit. I quit. So that's like one of the pipe dream cosplays that I have. Um, Final Fantasy VI will always forever be my love. I have a massive boner for Kafka, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, he's kind of like the Final Fantasy version of the Joker, so I think it's actually pretty spiffy, because, like, him, like, him and Joker have, like, the same kind of crazy logic going on, like, they're so fucking logical that they're fucking batshit crazy, and it's amazing. And, uh, you know, video games and all that, you know, like, it's mostly RPGs, I love everything Silent Hill, I love survival horror, everything. Um, you know, Resident Evil 1 and 2, I like 3, Code Veronica, and I liked 4, but anything after that doesn't exist to me. Um, comic book wise, I mean, first and foremost, the DC, even though at this point it costs like, more Marvel than DC, and that's okay. Um, mostly because most of my favorite characters from DC are all male, pretty much. Um, I try to do like their female counterparts and stuff like that, but you will never see me in a Lex Luthor costume. Even though that sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> um, my favorite costumes are X-23 and Tigra uh, and Harley Quinn because they're badass with killer personalities, literally. Yeah, and that's pretty much my likes and all of that. You know, I like long walks on the beach and uh, frisky women, to quote Dean Winchester. Um, I love me some Supernatural. I got into Vampire Diaries and then Season 4 happened. Season 4 happened. Um, I'm batshit crazy over Arrow. I love me some Green Arrow. It's amazing. Um, I like how they did uh, Huntress, you know, uh, Helena Bertinelli, not Helena Wayne. And I like eggs. I like eggs. But, um, yeah, this is like running longer than I wanted to, um, but yeah, I just wanted to pretty much do this, and I know I said, you know, I wanted you guys to pick today's, um, this week's vlog topic, um, I'm starting a crusade, I am, and because it hits really home for me, so I'm on a crusade to, uh, I'm on a crusade against bullying and cosplay, I've, contacted a couple of, you know, cosplayer friends of mine that I know through the grapevine and through conventions and stuff like that and ask them their opinions to share their experiences, um, and I'll be working on that, um, all year. I'm gonna go on and on with this because I think that while they're trying to stop bullying in schools, I think we should be addressing bullying and cosplay because, it's getting to a point where there are cosplayers committing suicide, there are cosplayers quitting, you know, because of the bullying. And, and at this point, you know, it's just, why can't, you know, we just get along, pretty much. And I think it's one of those things where, yeah, I am a hypocrite about it, because, you know, I have said my fair shit about, you know, cosplayers in general and, you know, well, you know, Harley Quinn is on a mall goth is my favorite, you know, thing to say. Because she's not. She's a girly girl. And, um, and I think that, you know, while everything is meant to be original and have fun and, you know, it's cosplay, you should be taking it seriously, I agree. I mean, I do it professionally, and I don't care. I'm, I still do it for fun. I don't do it for a paycheck, because before I, you know, before I started getting the paycheck, I started it for fun. I started it to be my favorite character. So there are just certain things where people just need to pipe the fuck down with. Thank you, Jenna Marbles, for my favorite line. My favorite line. Oh, and if you keep asking me, like, if you keep telling me that there's something in my teeth, that's actually a chipped tooth. Um, for some of you that know, that know, um, I used to have a lip ring, and it was the spiky ones, and they pretty much just kept on, like, chipping away at my tooth, till one day, I bit into a sandwich, and it actually popped out a piece of my tooth, but it's gonna get fixed, it's gonna get fixed, um, but this has gone on long enough, 
and I love you guys to death. You guys are my family. You guys are everything to me. And towels were on the roof. Thanks. <laughs>